so happy to see familiar faces, but I am also happy to see names and faces I don't know. Um, I'm Lisa Leininger, faculty in kinesiology. And uh, today I'm going to show you how to make veggie scrambles with, I guess you can call them country potatoes, but they're just pan potatoes here. Um, and I wanted when um, I wanted to do this, um, and then when this semester there was some openings I was able to uh, get in. I was trying to think, like, what are some things that would be really good uh, to make for this kind of event? And I'm kind of the perfect person for this. I'll tell you why. Um, I don't hate to cook, but I also don't love to cook. But my problem is I much prefer eating at home and I much prefer eating nutritionally. So um, that means I'm gonna have to do some stuff. But what that makes me the queen of is easy and typically pretty quick um, and something that um, is affordable as well, right? So doing a veggie-based scramble, so eggs as our protein with lots of colorful vegetables, our starchy potatoes, it's such a wonderfully balanced meal, and we can throw some cheese on it as well, uh, which we'll do today. Um, I thought this is like a super easy go-to meal and something also you can throw in anything into it, really, into your eggs or tofu if you wanna do tofu. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm gonna gotta, gotta get the potatoes started first because they do take the longest, and I know I'm trying to get my face and the cutting board, but the cutting board is more important than my face. Um, so I've cut already up some, I've done some prep ahead of time so that we would be uh, ready to go. And then um, I've got skillet, you know, regular skillet, and then a regular frying pan. And that's all the cooking utensils or cooking um, items you need besides a few uh, utensils. I'm gonna go ahead and get the heat going okay. on the skillet. Um, at about medium heat to warm it up. And um, I'm going to use canola oil for the potatoes. I'm not going to put it in quite yet. I'm going to let the pan heat up just a little bit. Then I'll go ahead and put that in. And, you know, for the canola oil, I would put, you know, a good layer. You're not deep frying these potatoes by any means. But if you don't put enough oil, they're not going to brown up and get nice and crispy. So, um, like I said, heat, it's heating up a little bit right now. I'm just cubing up some red potatoes. I've washed all of this stuff already. So make sure you wash your hands and you wash your veggies. And I love the red potatoes for this because um, color is wonderful in food. So it's really nice that you can leave the skin of the red potatoes is thin enough that it's, um, not really a problem if you're going to leave them on you know like you can eat any peel of a potato but um you know if you leave the peel on a russet potato it's kind of thick and hard so the red potatoes um have this really nice skin and you can leave it on so that's uh why i've chosen red potatoes but if you want to do yukon gold potatoes you can too I'm gonna go ahead and throw in some canola oil now. You can use it. I use canola oil because it's a high temp oil. So you can use vegetable oil as well. Probably don't wanna use olive oil, but you could, but it just has a high, uh, lower smoke point. So yeah, so something like canola or vegetable is good for frying potatoes um, because it can cook at a higher temp. So I've still got it on medium though. I can turn it up a little bit, maybe medium high-ish and I'll finish cutting up these potatoes. Um, while I do this, I think we were gonna have a, a reminder about kitchen bingo, right? Did you guys oh, wanna yeah. talk about that? Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, I'm gonna actually um, ask Sabrina or Myra to tell the group about kitchen bingo. Yeah, so Kitchen Bingo was one of our most popular event last semester. I hope some of y'all attended it. If not, you can. Uh, this month, March 21st, is on a Sunday from 2 to 3.30. Um, 
it's on the weekend so i'm sure hopefully everybody can attend and the name is self-given we're gonna play bingo online virtually i will be your host i'm trying to make it fun for everyone and there's going to be 15 to 20 rounds and there's three winners per round and so you can win up to three times as well we have prizes such as air fryers ipads and what else do we have myra did you want to touch up on it yeah, we also have some self-care items. Um, so the link is in the chat. Feel free and register for it. So you're in, you know, you have your spot. It's free to join, to play. Just come hang out with us and win some awesome prizes. Yeah, and we also partner with AS. Yeah, with AS, yeah. All right, we so we have some oil yeah. questions. Yes. People are wondering about avocado or coconut oil. Um, you know, I don't cook with those. Um, personally, this is a personal opinion. Coconut oil, there's nothing really that special about it. And it's high in saturated fat. Um, and so you want to stay away from, you know, too much saturated fat. You want to stick with the monounsaturated fats, which are heart healthy. Um, so I don't cook with coconut oil personal preference though um but they would work certainly anything liquid will work um and avocado oil again same kind of idea it's just i think canola oil and vegetable oil are also a lot more affordable ah. so yeah yeah and that's the other thing so um yeah great question though wonderful question um just real quick i went ahead and put the potatoes into the oil um important here don't stir them don't if you want that that nice brown <laughs> You know, leave them be for a little bit. Um, leave them be. We'll go ahead and stir them eventually, but for now, just let them go. Do we have any other questions? Can I ask why oils smoke yeah. at different points? Because I have made the olive oil air many times because I'll just like, oh, be like, oh, oil. And then I put it in, and then five minutes later, my salmon is like on fire. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a great question. And I don't know all the chemistry behind the smoke points of oil. <laughs> okay, fair. But, but I, I have a sneaking suspicion that I will share with you. Um, so the oils that have high smoke points are really light in color and like clear. And so I suspect that there is just more going on in the darker oils perhaps, like the olive oil and stuff that lead to it, you know, having a lower smoke point. So that is not official. That is, <laughs> that is, that's what I tell my students is a Dr. L theory. It's a theory. But, um, yeah, it is a theory. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, yeah, other yeah, other questions. Heat is it on high or me? Did you say medium or low? Yeah, I've got I've got it a little bit over medium high heat. So my stove is a gas range, um, and it goes up from like two to six. And right now I've got it a, like between three and four. So I would say medium high heat. Um, but again, if you do it too high it's going to burn um you want it kind of in that sweet spot if you will yeah so what i'm doing now is i'm just dicing up some peppers prepping for our veggies scrambles those come together so fast um i do a lot of the prep while the potatoes are in the pan all right yeah oh we have some fun facts Avocado oil has one of the highest smoke points at 270 Whoa. degrees Celsius. Yeah. 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Whoa. <laughs> That's crazy. I didn't know that. Because I don't know, I don't cook with avocado oil. So I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I had no idea. That's really cool. Very cool. I like all right, so I'm gonna, Yeah, go ahead. Grapeseed oil. That was all I was gonna say. Oh, yeah, grapeseed oil, it's it's a high it's gotta have a high cooking point because it's almost clear, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and give my potatoes a stir. Oh yeah, they look the nice back side. The their, their uh, bottoms are nice and brown. You can probably hear the sizzling in my ear AirPods here. So I'm gonna give them a good turn. Again, let them sit. I'll probably turn the heat down a little bit. Feels like it's getting a little warm here. So I'm gonna do that. Also, pro tip. I've ruined so many clothes by cooking, like in my normal clothes. Eight dollars on Amazon, like do it. Cause you know what else I do? Does anybody else do this? Like no matter what I'm doing, I'll just wipe things on my pants like this. And I'm like, where did I get that from? My dad, I think. 
yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, no problem. You're, that's a very cute apron, and I think you're the first host that's ever worn an apron on the show. So thank you for modeling the way. Thank you. It took me many years to figure this out. Lots of ruined sweatshirts. Like oil, you know, and, and what made me just think of it is the oil was kind of popping a little bit. And I was like, oh, good. Um, yeah, so we got the, the potatoes rolling around here. They're just hanging out. Um, but I have to protect my, my exercise and medicine sweatshirt. That's what's going on. So, yeah. Um, so, actually, while we wait, unless anyone has any questions, um, uh, a lot of you have probably heard of exercise is medicine, but if you're not a kinesiology student, um, you may not have. And what it is, it's an initiative from one of our biggest professional organizations, the American College of Sports Medicine. And what we try to do is make physical activity part of everyday life um, in, in, uh, at CSUMB. So part of the culture. And so we do that a lot of ways. Of course, COVID derailed a lot of the stuff that we had planned and we're doing, but we have lots of things virtually right now. So every Tuesday and Thursday, we have virtual circuit training classes. Um, we have a Strava club uh, and it's uh, called the CSUMB Run, Walk and Roll Club. We also have a YouTube channel that has all of our, oh, there's Penny, see her? Yeah, it's like what's, what's going on in here? <laughs> the eggs aren't even out yet, sweetheart. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, and then we also have a YouTube channel that has all of our back classes from, um, the Zoom circuit training and, uh, other videos from, uh, some alumni that own Reborn Fit, uh, which is a fantastic, uh, community based, uh, training program and gym in Salinas. And so we have lots of things going on. If you go to the, uh, main CSUMB website, EIM. We'll take you the first hit on the search bar will be exercises medicine and you can go check out what we've got going on there. So, um, you know, exercise, healthy living, eating well, it all goes hand in hand. So you can't, you know, try to improve every area just a little bit. And you'll be on the right track. All right. The other thing you could do with your potatoes if you were in a hurry is cover them. I don't really need to cover them because we have the entire hour um, to do that. So I can just leave them open, but you could cover them and they'll just get softer a little bit quicker. And I'll turn that down here. I have a question, Lisa. Yeah, of course. Uh, white potatoes versus sweet potatoes because we hear a lot of like nutrition information that sweet potatoes have higher nutritional value. But, you know, we, there's a lot of white potatoes in our foods and our traditional recipes. So yeah. could you enlighten us a little bit about that? Yeah, great question. Um, all potatoes are extremely nutritious. Um, they're just different, different nutrients. So um, if typically, typically if a vegetable or a fruit is a different color, it probably has different things. So for example, and this is not a perfect rule, but for example, things that are red or orange often have a lot of beta carotene, which is a brief precursor to vitamin A, usually has a lot of vitamin C, um, whereas something, you know, a different color vegetable will have different um, nutrients and definitely different phytochemicals, which are, um, they're not vitamins, they're not minerals, but we know that they're really important for health. We know they're really, really good for you and the way you know that something has phytochemical is that it's colorful. So um, they're just different, but all potatoes, and this is the other reason I told Joanna this too. The other reason I wanted to make potatoes, even though I'm doing them in oil, which is still heart healthy, um, is that potatoes are a wonderful food. They're an affordable food. They're a delicious food. Um, and you know, there's, there's definitely some bad press for white potatoes mm -hmm. a lot, but you know that you can overeat anything and you can uh lose weight eating anything because a lot of the is you know it's all about caloric balance so you know you can eat a sliver of chocolate cake every day and still lose weight <laughs> or you could eat you know 10 pounds of potatoes every day and gain weight um so um you just have to be mindful of your portion you know and and one potato is definitely a very healthy portion and that's what i'm doing today so my husband and I will eat this at four o'clock. Um, so I've got two red, I've got two red potatoes 
in in the um, the pan. And you'll probably even know, like I'll probably have leftovers from this. So a little goes a long way with potatoes as well. So yeah, thanks for asking that question yeah. because um, all, all of it is healthy. Um, it's just that, you know, if you deep fry them and dip them in salt, uh, sugary tomato ketchup, <laughs> not, probably not the best choice, right? <laughs> if you if you bake a sweet potato, maybe that's a little bit better, yes. But yeah, if they're prepared well, they're all healthy. They're all good for you. So awesome. yeah, thanks. Thanks for asking that question. And so affordable students, I know when we had the food pantry on campus, also that was one of the items they would give out bags of potatoes. So <sighs> And they keep forever. Yeah. And that's the other great, yeah, that's the other great thing is that things like, I've had, I have sweet potatoes that are over in my little bowl there. I think one of them has been there for a couple weeks and it's fine. Like yeah. it, 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 it will stick around. So that's the other wonderful thing is that some fruits and vegetables go bad really quickly. Um, and potatoes and things like carrots don't. So um, what I just did is I just uh, pulled out a bowl uh, from the fridge. I've already cracked four eggs into the bowl. Um, and that's because I was doing a little prep earlier and I wanted to make sure I washed my hands really well after I cracked the eggs. So anytime you're dealing with raw eggs, just food safety pro tip. Um, you know, the, the likelihood of getting salmonella from raw eggs is low, but why, why push it, right? Um, so I cracked the four eggs into a bowl because we're gonna beat them up. Um, and then toss the shells and wash my hands real good. So four eggs right now in this bowl. We can get them prepped because I think the potatoes are coming along nicely. So you can put anything you want in your eggs. Um, I'm gonna put some black pepper uh, and maybe a little salt, but you, if you like garlic, if you like, um, you know, Italian seasonings, whatever you like, you can put anything at all. And like I said, that's one of the other wonderful things about these veggie scrambles is you can do a pantry clean out night or a, <laughs> a fridge clean out night and say, oh, the broccoli's not looking so hot. Better use it, right? Um, that kind of thing. So little salt, little pepper for me. Um, we don't eat garlic in my house. Oh. I can't, I know. Yeah, so. Um, Long story short, garlic has fructin, and fructin, some people are intolerant to it. Uh, um, my husband is intol intolerant to it, so <laughs> no garlic in the house. No garlic. Like, oh. yeah. But he can do onion, so he can do onion, um, and, and I will do onion in the scrambles today. But so what I'm saying here is, if you want garlic, go for it. Um, you could even add fresh garlic to the veggies that we're going to saute up. So. We have a lot of garlic lovers on this show. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, and it, you know, it's one of those things It's like, he doesn't care if I share this, but it's one of those things It's like, garlic's in everything. It's like in everything. All, the, all the processed stuff you buy, all the packaged food you buy. And so it took him a life, like 35 years to figure out that garlic was really bothering him. Um, and so once, once you get that cut out, good to go. Um, yeah, but it does make it real tough. <laughs> yeah, for eating uh, it. Are there any yeah, substitutes yeah. that y'all use or just kind of season otherwise? Or Yeah, I season otherwise. And actually I'll, I'll show you today, I'm gonna put paprika in the potatoes instead. Ooh of like seasoning salt because seasoning salt has garlic powder um so yeah i'm gonna use paprika today so um but you can do like uh if you are sensitive to things like that um you can do garlic infused olive oil fun fun fact um the fructin that bothers people in garlic actually can be infused into an oil without any issue so Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I have mm -hmm. to start looking for Zalva and love it. Yep, yep, that's yep. Amazing. So we can do that. We can do that. I just don't go through the trouble of infusing olive oil. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, second pan going here. It's just a frying pan. And I actually did put olive oil in this one. Um, for the veggies? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to saute the veggies in it and then throw the, the eggs in to scramble it up. 
so we'll get that going. I'm kind of curious, does anyone, anyone do stuff like this at home all the time or regularly? Veggie scrambles, potatoes. I saw anyone? Misha oh, yeah. Misha says yeah. Go ahead. I do it sometimes. Usually I'll do some kind of veggie scramble every single day and oh. just modify it with different veggies and different yep. spices. And yep. um, instead of uh, pan frying the potatoes, I'll slice them and bake them in the oven. And yep. so then that way you get that same crispy texture, um, but you can do it without the oil and then you just yep. add it in after. Yeah. Yep, I love that. That's great. That's so, wonderful. So like on the outside, it might seem it might seem like I'm making the same thing every day, but it's so different because all yep. the vegetables have different flavors and you can season it so many different ways. And so there's yes. a lot of room for creativity. Uh, exactly. That's why having something like this in your back pocket is such a cool, it's such an easy thing to have. And so, and again, I wanted it to be affordable. Literally, I think if you buy, eggs are a really affordable source of protein. Yeah. So I think eggs, you can still get a dozen for three bucks or less. Um, you know, and you can get a couple of great meals out of that. So, um, yeah, I love eggs as a source of good protein for sure. Okay. So our olive oil looks like it's nice and warm. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to throw in my onions and my peppers first. So I'm doing onions, peppers. I'm going to do some spinach, but the spinach does not need to go in until the very end. Um, so we've got our onions in, this and our red pepper in. How Cut. which order to do the veggies in? Like if you're, so you said you're going to do the spinach last. How do you well, like judge which? Yeah, do you, at what a point? lot of that is is, is experience. <laughs> so, <laughs> some, but typically something like firm is going to take a little longer to cook, right? So potatoes take much longer than peppers and onions, um, but something green and leafy is going to cook fast. So kale, spinach, you know, any of those um, are going to cook cabbage. All of those things cook real fast. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if it has to do with like the water content. Um, that's a great question and it might, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, so I've got the onions and the peppers near here in this frying pan. The potatoes, I turned down the heat way on the potato, uh, way down on the potatoes just to make sure they don't get too crazy over there um and the peppers and the onions can go for a couple of minutes you know if you like a a firmer crunchier veggie great if you like a more cooked veggie let them sit a little longer um pro tip i i prepped the onions already before the uh broadcast started um <laughs> Does anybody wear goggles to cut onions? <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. I have goggles. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Gabby. Gabby probably has all the You goggles. know I have goggles. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, so Ken Professor, Dr. Bellamori, who will be doing this next week, uh, I told her about this a couple years ago, and now every time she cuts onions, she'll like send me a picture of her cutting onions. So. <laughs> It's it a miracle. <laughs> it's a miracle. So Let me crazy. tell you. Yeah, it's crazy. So we had one uh, student say they tried it, but it didn't work. Oh, <laughs> you, you, you need a good feel on those goggles. Yeah, yeah. really push them on. Maybe it almost yeah. hurts a little, but it's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> nice <laughs> suction on those. I'm just giving the potatoes another little stir. They're a little dark on the one side, but it looked good to me. All right, we're gonna stir these a little bit more. Uh, the peppers, the onions, they look awesome. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and wilt down um, the spinach. So uh, just these are fresh spinach leaves. You could use frozen if you want, but you know, you just gotta make sure you get all the moisture out of the frozen. So I just grab and spinach cooks down too. So you think it's a lot, but it cooks down so much. I just grab the spinach and tear it up. Tear it up in here. And you know, you can use it. And that's the other great thing. And I don't know who, I, I'm spotlighted, so I don't know who's speaking. Um, but someone said earlier, like, you know, they do their veggies or their uh, scrambles and potatoes different every day. Um, 
you can put as much of this as you want, as little as you want. If you don't like a certain vegetable, you don't have to eat that vegetable, friends. You can find something else you don't you you like instead. So, if you want to use kale, great. Um, the reason the veggies I chose today um, is because I like the different colors. So I had a yellow onion, um, the red bell pepper, and then the green spinach, of course, the green leafy spinach. So I liked that kind of variety. And look, spinach already done. Spinach is already done. So now, I'm gonna turn the potatoes up again. So now I've got my eggs that I've beat and I've put some salt and some pepper in them. Just pour them right down in there. And I'm gonna let them sit for a second. Yep, I'm gonna let them sit just for a minute. And then I'm just gonna take my rubber spatula, which is one of those tools. It's awesome. You should all have one of these. I think this was $2 at Target. The rubber spatula is great for eggs, baking, sauces, getting the last of whatever out of uh, jars. So Bowls. And the blender, yep. if you make a smoothie. The blender, yeah. exactly. I'm telling you, this has been, such a good gadget, such a good tool. Not really a gadget, but a tool. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start just stirring the eggs around so that they're nice and fluffy. Cause this is an omelet. You can do an omelet if you want. Every time I try to make an omelet, it doesn't work. So just scramble them up, right? If you're good at omelets, great, do an omelet. Um, we, Misha shared on the chat that she never liked spinach or kale until she started doing cooking with CSUMB and now she loves them. Yay! <laughs> oh, yay! That's awesome! But I you know, seriously cook with them all the time now. I'll put some in while I'm cooking and then I'll put some in right before it's done cooking and so they're like yeah. slightly less cooked and so you get that various texture and then I'll just texture. put some fresh on top and I'm obsessed with a whole bag in one meal. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I'm and so healthy. I think it's just <laughs> before I had never had them cooked properly or something, but yeah, I'm, my horizons have been broadened. Yeah. That's what it is. I think a lot of times, like when people don't like certain fruits and veggies, like they have just had them prepared so poorly, yeah. like when they were kids that it's just hard to get over and I get that but yeah if you can get uh, there's this wonderful kale recipe that like use it that I've done with apple cider vinegar and just so tangy mm -hmm. and delicious and like even my husband ate, ate it and he's not a big kale fan so um yeah if you just play around and try to get some things like right like or brussels sprouts that's another one Oh yeah. my gosh. If the you chat prepare, agrees with you. <laughs> oh, if you prepare Brussels sprouts correctly, they are amazing. But <laughs> if they're they're just like soggy and cabbage, like no one wants to eat that. Like, you know? Well, all right. We prepped some frozen ones a couple weeks ago because I just like thought maybe I wouldn't go for frozen Brussels. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Probably where the bad PR came from. <laughs> Fresh is better. You never know. Yeah, you never know. And there's nothing, nothing against frozen anything. Frozen right, yeah. veggies are great. But yeah, to your point, it's kind of like, um, oh gosh, like frozen okra. I know okra is not a big thing uh, in California. Yeah, I love okra. <laughs> it's frozen. Not oh, it's fine. Saute it up nice. Get a little bit of like. Oh, some... really? Yeah. Oh, oh. I like it's the not texture. Slimy. Though. Oh, you like the yeah. texture. Oh, interesting. I Interesting. Know. I am very yeah. different palettes. <laughs> different palettes. That's okay. Thank you, Joanna. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Though? It's such a, it's such a good point. Like truly, if you think you don't like fruits and vegetables, just keep trying. You know, like there will be something that you can you can do. I be, I believe that that everybody can figure that out. And your you body will thank you. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you may even really come to like it. So, all right, everything is looking super awesome here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and put some cheese on eggs. Um, Misha, did you wanna talk about any subs for vegans here? Well, I think what you're cooking right now is super uh, vegan friendly. 
Uh, which is awesome. The eggs, you don't really have to put them in at all. Or um, you were saying before you could substitute it with tofu. If you mm -hmm. do go that direction, you should buy the silken kind or the soft kind. And you can literally just take it in your hand. It'll come in a block and just squeeze it. And then it'll kind of form the texture of scrambled eggs. Then you just put it in the pan and you can like fry it like you would exactly as, as you see here. Um, and usually I'll go for a different type of texture. So I'll like bake the tofu cause I like it a little bit crispy. Um, but this recipe is absolutely awesome. And I want to kind of just touch on how important, uh, what you were saying about the like phytonutrients and the mm -hmm. different colors. Like I always live by the principle of just eating the rainbow, mm. not skittles, but with vegetables and fruits. <laughs> and that's the easy, that's how I learned to eat a diverse, like nutritional meal is yep. I'll just, you know, have something of lots of various colors and then there'll be lots of various nutrients in there. And that's, oh, it's so easy to remember. You're like, oh, the more colors, the better, which is, yep why it's great to keep skin on things. Like mm -hmm. if you keep the skin on an apple, you get the fiber with the sugar instead of just the sugar and you get more vitamins in there. And so the more colors, the better when it comes to whole foods. So I would highly recommend like eating the skin of things and just if your food looks pretty because it's all colorful, your body will also like it. You bet. Yeah, I love that. There you go. Yeah, I love it. Um, so what I just did, yeah, thanks, Misha. So I just want to let you know real quick. Um, I went ahead and the potatoes are done. So I went ahead and put the paprika, just, you know, good shush, and uh, a little bit of salt. Um, stirred those around. Those are going to be ready in no time. Cheese has melted down on the egg. So the other thing I'm going to do real quick is for the potatoes, you can also add peppers and onions to that. You know, I know a lot of people have those and serve them that way. Um, but I happen to have some green onions in the fridge. So I'm just cutting up the green tops and I'm gonna throw those into the potatoes. Um, and it's another one of those things where I don't, um, I don't, Penny's yelling, um, I don't cook them very long. Like you just don't even need to, do anything to them um you don't want to overcook them so i'm going to go ahead and just throw those in and stir them up and then i'll plate it and show you how pretty it is Yay. and then for another for uh the one thing that's probably missing in this is in terms of like not something that's big present um is a good fat so of course we use the oil we use the cheese. The cheese is saturated fat, though. Um, and then the egg has some. Um, but if you want an extra little boost of fruit and veg, we'll slice up some avocado and put that on the top of the bowl. Yeah. That'll be that'll be it. Yeah, it'll be good to go. So here, before before I plate, I'll show you, though. Look. There's Penny. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Penny? <laughs> so you have to make her a plate, too. <laughs> yes. So she smells that everything is ready. Uh, we, used, we used to call Penny. We used to call Penny the sous chef, like because she was always here. But, but then we realized, no, the sous chef actually works. Right. So she's so the now, customer. Yeah. So the now, it, she is. We call her the. She's the executive chef. Okay. She, yes. She does all of the uh, quality control. Um, yeah. So she's. <laughs> clearly ready for dinner. Um, so what I've done is I've just taken some potatoes. There they are. Those look good. Nice and yummy. Yeah, I just got some potatoes. I love these bowls. I didn't buy these bowls so we were cooking at home every day because of quarantine. Um, they're uh, these big, you know, pasta and salad bowls. I put everything in them now. Yeah. I just love them so much. I love them so, so much. Where are they so, from, Lisa? Uh, I think I ordered them on Target. Target and they're they're like the Pyrex brand. Um, I felt like it was a bit of a splurge. I think it was like thirty dollars for four of them. <laughs> but yeah. I love them. But I love them so day. much. Exactly. I'm using them so so much. That's and like, like one it makes, meal out too. So yeah, exactly. And like 
that. It's so like eating pasta and salads out of a bowl like this is just so fun and nice. So I've got some veggies now, or I've got some uh, eggs now on top here of our bowl. Beautiful. And I'm gonna go ahead and slice up some avocado. Does anyone have any secrets okay. to how they slice avocado? I'm just kind of curious. Anyone want to put that in the chat real quick? <laughs> I normally just do it down the middle. Yeah. yeah like you're doing it and then just yeah. take it out. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. i just curious if anyone had anything super fancy. Uh, I just cut it down the middle and then I slice it while it's in Yeah. the, the skin, you know, and then I just take a fork and shush it around and... I use a spoon and I just like wedge it in between the skin and it and then just take it yeah. Yeah, I do the same thing with a fork. And I feel like I just, the only reason I do it with fork is because like, I feel like I'm gonna then use the fork to eat my dinner so it saves a dish. <laughs> Utensil, yeah, I know. <laughs> so lazy, so lazy. <sighs> so yeah, and you can use as much yeah. avocado as you want. A fun um, fact or a not yeah. so fun fact. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Um, one of my best friends is a nurse and she said the most common um, like cut injury that people come in with is someone slicing their finger while cutting an avocado. Oh, I bet. And I've done that before. It was like the most blood I've seen in my whole life. And oh my God. since then I cut avocados with a butter knife and it works uh -huh. as and well. It works. And yep. so for anyone that like, and I don't usually cut myself while cooking and chopping anymore, but butter knives work with avocados just because they're so soft, especially they're soft, you right. get through the, right. the outer layer. Yeah. So totally, that's totally. <laughs> There's yeah, no I think I just saw, I just saw in the chat right now, getting the pit out is dangerous. I totally agree with that. Cause you know what I do and this is, this is probably not a great idea, but I take the knife and I'll try to it's the I pit. do that too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I do that too. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm not advocating for that, but I <laughs> I can Myra. see where that goes wrong. Myra yes. says CSUV is not. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So um, I've got the avocado all sliced up. Here we oh, go, how friends. Man. That is actually very wow. Instagram worthy. That's I'm incredible. Like, yeah. That looks mm. gorgeous. Yep. And soup, like I said, like, what is here? Potatoes, eggs, peppers, onions, spinach, some cheese, and an avocado. This is healthy, I'm telling you. Healthy. So and healthy. affordable. And breakfast, yeah. lunch, and, and yeah. dinner, too. And you can make it any meal, totally any meal. Um, so yeah, I think it was just a really good choice for this this program. Have a go-to, have some go-to, right? And I you think this is one of them. Mix it up, like so. Lisa used that shredded cheese. You could do a goat mm -hmm. cheese. You could do a oh yeah, a, a plant-based, like a vegan-based cheese. Um, mm -hmm. Anything that salsa with yep. or without garlic. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exactly. With that, but, I yeah, we have some pickled jalapenos that we did last night. You could throw those on here. Oh yeah, go for it. Ooh, cashew so crazy. That's awesome. Yep. So totally, I love it. Everybody give Lisa emoji claps or real claps or a combo and thank her. Thank you so much for this beautiful, affordable, nutritious meal for our students. And of course, we wish we could all um, come over. I could come over because I you're really close to me and I yeah I know yeah. where you live. Uh -huh. <laughs> But we won't do that in COVID times. Um, Lisa, is there anything that you want to plug for, like, do you want to try to convert some more Ken majors while you've got the students here? Anything? Yes, yes, no, uh, no, absolutely not. Um, I think anybody, everybody can, can work to improve their wellness, but Ken will absolutely take you if you're looking for a place to go. We, we work hard, we play hard. Um, and yeah, come see us on Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon. That's when we do our live Zoom sessions. They're pretty fun. And we've got some great students that lead those uh, classes. So yeah, join us. Awesome. Do you need Thank any you. equipment? Oh. oh, go ahead. Do you need equipment or can you just- You don't have to. You, yeah. don't, have to. No, okay. you don't have to. Body weight, great. Um, if you have some weight, great. If you have resistance bands, cool. Um, usually most people will have at least five or eight pounds um, dumbbells. And those that actually make pretty much any workout we do doable. So, yep, great question. 
to close. All right. Any other questions for Lisa before we do the giveaway? Give stuff away. Thank you.